welcome back. I'm Nikki with Pivot Seekers Online, owner of 3P's Training and Coaching Solutions. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've checked out some of the other uh, videos that I've posted here on YouTube and also on TikTok and IG. Um, my blog on www.pivotseekers.com. Hopefully you're a little bit familiar uh, with what I'm hoping to accomplish through this channel. But today, what I really wanted to focus on is uh, something that's been bothering me that I feel like I need to talk about in relation to the things that I am attempting to um, train and coach about, you know, things like self-awareness and self-management, um, going out there and creating the processes and the systems in order to get to the change that you really want to see in your life, life strategy, um, pivot consultations. These are all things that I've been talking about in my previous videos and anything that may be in relation to it. But today something was on my heart um, as I was preparing to start filming and I felt like I needed to go ahead and put this into a script and go ahead and talk about it. So if you watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm more of a writer than I am more of a speaker at this time. I pour more of me out onto the page. So I did write out um, exactly what I wanted to talk about. So you will see me going between looking at you and looking at what I want to say. So just so you know, the memory, it's not great, but we find a way to self-hack and to make it work for us, right? So that's what my intention is with this here. Um, so something that has been bothering me that I felt I needed to talk about, um, I strongly advocate for self-awareness and self-management because learning how to manage myself and practice self-control and discipline in most aspects of my life has provided a form of liberation that I didn't realize that I could have. And when I say liberation, I mean a freedom from certain uh, internal oppressions that we may experience that we think are um, specifically in, in pos imposed on us from the external, you know, our family or our culture, or our society. And, and that may be somewhat so, um, but the power that it has on the inside of us, that is something that we do have the ability to work with and to um, invoke some forms of change. And that's really what 3Ps is about, is that peace, prosperity, and purpose, all of that begins inside of you. And so all of the training and coaching that we want to provide is in order to enhance what comes from inside out. So I hope that makes sense. So when I describe this journey, um, it tends to come across as self-sufficient and exalting my ability to overcome the oppressions that I have, that have entangled me in my adult life, right? Um, the truth is a bit diluted, and I want to clear that up now as we move forward because I don't want to exalt myself as this uh, special, unique being that's able to put these systems into place and these frameworks and these fancy terms and create this life, right, and just be able to make these pivots and go about things and make changes and make shifts and change this and change that. That's what I come off as, I'm sure, to some people, um, and that, that's not my intention at all. Um, I think my main issue is, is uh, an assumption that I have made that when I'm sharing this information with people, I'm assuming certain things, and that's where I need to work on myself. So I just want to be clear that there is nothing self-sufficient about the existence of a woman who has been invisible, incapable, and inadequate her whole life. And that woman I'm talking about is me. Um, this is no self-led victory that I can claim decades long battles with depression, anxiety, self-hate, and isolation. I did not keep myself from taking my life too soon. It was the presence of God that came to me in the wee hours of the night when I my wept so hard that my eyes were swollen for hours after. Um, it was the glimpses throughout my life of his love and grace sporadically, um, example through people that I least expected it. It was divine connections. I would not be here right now today if it were not for the surrender of my inner woman to his healing, rebuilding, and redeeming powers. I can stand before you and encourage you to look within because I've already had to lean on God as I looked within and hated what I saw. When I say hated what I saw, I'm saying looking in a mirror at myself and crying through affirmations because I didn't believe any of them. That's how broken I had gotten to. So to try to do this without his perfect love is to become engulfed with your humanity at its worst. 
We weren't built to bear the world and on our own in our own strength. I was just having a conversation with him about this the other day because when you get to a certain point in life, not only can you look back on everything that you've overcome and say, how in the world did I come through all of that? But then you're also looking at what you're standing against now. Like for me, for instance, I have three adult daughters and one that's almost an adult and all of them carry their own lives and their own situations. And as a parent, if you're a parent of adults, you understand you can no longer tell them what to do. You have to position yourself as, as friend, as mentor, as coach in order to remain a part of their lives. Because if you try to invoke authority at all times when they're adults, you lose them. You push them away, right? Because they are adult beings that have to go about life and they have to learn things on their own. So for me, what this looks like is understanding, like being a manager, right? Understanding your people, understanding their personalities, how they function, what makes them tick, what would turn them on, what would turn them off. So as a parent, having to help them along in their lives without interfering. That's basically it right there, right? That's very difficult to do because then you feel like you're carrying the burden of everything that they don't see. But you can't even see everything, right? So my conversation with God was really gratitude because it was like, I can't imagine four times over every single day worrying about four different individuals and the decisions that they make and the lives that they're going about all of the people that are going in and out of their lives, the situations, the, the spiritual battles, mental and emotional health, physical, all of that for four different people, plus my own, plus my spouse, plus any siblings or friends or anyone else that is around me. It's very taxing. And I could have never done this without God's help. So my point of this video is to encourage you to consider that spirituality is one thing yes we should consider but an actual relationship with the one who created you and the very world around you is the ultimate foundation to stand on from there yes self-awareness is needed um, becoming acquainted with the one that he loves which is you or me self-management is needed to walk in the power and dominion he gave us in this world this world around us in the external that we've become conditioned to give control over us. We have to learn to take power from awareness and knowledge and use it to be the fuel for our vehicle of purpose and intention in this world. Doing this requires setting priorities and boundaries and limitations, etc. And this is where I feel compelled to help. So if you take anything from this conversation, please take from it that I did not stand in my own healing and management in my own strength but in the strength of the one who knows my beginning and my end. Yes, we need to consider personal development and growth. I think these are areas that as a Christian community, we've overlooked for so long and now you're hearing teachers and preachers begin to touch on places and points that we didn't hear when we were younger in the church. You can't just expect to pray everything away and, 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 and read your Bible and, and bury yourself away from what's going on in this world because it, it, ultimately, it is ultimately going to affect you and those you love and those around you in some way or whoever you are called to serve in this world. So yes, we do need to consider that, but we should also be building upon the foundation of the surrender of the one, the higher one who knows all things and is in all places at all times. The one who knows the totality of our inner workings and how best to heal, repair, and revitalize all that is you, all that is me. If you don't have that foundation in my own experience, now, this is the mean for everybody. I can make that kind of a blanket statement, but that wouldn't be fair to you and your decision of how you want to approach your relationship with one higher than all of us. But the truth is you'll always be striving for the next point. Never reaching a place of fulfillment and trust me, I know the frustration that comes from striving in your own ability. It sucks and it is life sucking, to say the least. So I speak from a place of assumption many times that those who are drawn to my voice have already done this inner work and created this relationship. I'm wrong for assuming. 
I think my assumptions come from a place of uncertainty or un, um, not being accepted, right? Because in my, in my mind, I don't necessarily fit in one circle or the other. This is how I've been groomed and created to be. But that doesn't make it any less important to me. These concepts can affect, be effective in anyone's life and truly create pivots of change. But without a relationship with God and coming to terms with who he created you to be and why, will those pivots of change be transformative and longstanding? Will they be a legacy to pass on for generations? That's what I have desired for myself and for my family for generations to come. I didn't want to just make changes temporarily to get to the next level, the next status level, the next level of materialistic things and, and zeros in the bank account. I want something that's going to be sustainable long term, not just me, but beyond myself. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to really truly accomplish greatness in that area without the one who created us all. So I ask you, is your desire to create change coming from a place of elevation for more than just yourself? Is it for more than just material and tangible things? Those are the types of things that you have to ask for yourself. That's where the motivation pillar for 3P's framework comes from. Why? Simple, that's the question, why? And is my why the right why? Not just what I think, but what I was created and am given life daily to fulfill. Because let me tell you, most of us take for granted that we lay our heads down and wake up in the morning. But that's not the norm. There are many people all over this world everywhere that do not have the privilege of opening our eyes and breathing and getting out of the bed and going about life the way that we do on a daily basis. That's facts. So feel free, let me know what you think. How do you feel about these questions? Did you like the answers when you asked yourself these questions? And can you get to the real answers? Because that's where someone like me and my company will come in with helping you to really get in touch with those answers. So thank you so much for watching and listening and I will see you next week. Uh, this Friday, the blog recap for this week's blog will be released, and I will see you soon.